Okay, so why don't you talk about some of the wonderful things that you've done in this 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 year? Sure. Um, you're vice chair of the healthcare fin and financing. Mm -hmm. uh, healthcare financing. Mm -hmm. What does that mean, and what have you done? Sure. Healthcare finance is um, a very important committee in the House, and and you know the state of healthcare these days. We're really in crisis we're, everywhere you look, whether it's in nursing, in the physicians, it's the kitchen staff, it's the it's the yeah. whole hospital itself, and not even that primary primary care physicians. Right. We're short on primary care physicians right. and we had compass close. So it's very important. Um, and what that what we do there is we list we, people file a lot of health care bills as you can imagine yes. trying to change the system. Yep. Um, and we listen to those people for those testimony. Mm -hmm. And there'll be an omnibus on om, omnibus, I can never say that. There'll be a large bill, let's put yeah, it that way. A large bill yep. Yep. omnibus that will you know bring in a lot of different bills. So yep. there'll be a large bill. That will happen this year. Mm -hmm. Um that's what we're working on now. But it's really it, it just hearing the, the testimony from CNAs. You know, right. nursing, so not only the traveling Nursing's nurse so situation yeah. has right. really right. upset the hospitals yeah. with their, their finances. Um, it's a great committee to be on. I'm learning a lot. The mm. chair is John Lawn, who's amazing. It's very busy. It's mm -hmm. very time intensive, but I, I'm enjoying it, really enjoying it. Um, and then besides that, I, I'm on Ways and Means, which is another, the yep. committee and you want to be on. what Ways and Means mean? What does it mean? So ways Define and means. Define that for me. Uh, it's a good question. <laughs> so it's really about budget, right? So okay. ways and means. Like you want, you, you, it's really about budgeting yep. is what it means, right? Ways you want the, this, the, the ways and the means we're going to do it. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So that we work on. So our our work is before yep. the budget comes out. Okay. So we're meeting with all those state agencies. Um to find out what they want for money, why they need more money, yep. that type of thing. And then that goes into the budget when we think of, okay, what did we finance them at last time? Yep. And what is the funding going to be this, this time? time? And it's really interesting. And, you know, there's more things like this year we put in funding for free lunches. Right, I saw that. That is huge. Is that for every school? That's for every in school in Massachusetts. Yeah. Yeah. And that studies show, you know, that children that are actually have nutrition, they're doing better in yeah. school. They're getting a, along with their their yeah. students, their other fellow students. They're paying attention. Yeah. I mean, it's made a huge difference in our school children. Yeah. Um, so that that's one of the things we thought as Ways and Means was so important for right. our community, right. for our young people that have been through so much with the pandemic and schooling. Um, so we're we're able to do things like that. We put more money into mental health. Right. You know, that that's a huge right. thing. Can I just ask about sure. the school lunch? Mm -hmm. Is is that it that so that's not needs based. That's no, like everything. So what if what if people don't need it? You know what I mean? I mean I mean right. all that money that's right. going towards that. Right. Right. Could they opt out so that money can no. go towards something else? No. no. So it's this isn't all yep. okay. You know, if when you when you look at it that way, um, we had children that had received a free lunch or a reduced lunch. Yep. And everybody knew that they had a free lunch or reduced lunch, right? right? Oh, so okay. the stigma's gone too. Gotcha. You know, everybody's gotcha. on an equal playing yep. field. And it just, it really, I think it's worth the, worth the investment. I really do. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so you want to talk about the different funding that you've gotten for schools, housing, workforce development, transportation? Sure. Some of the earmarks that we've done. Yeah. Some of the earmarks that we've done. So... Kingston has a summer, so it's kind of on the thing of the free lunches. Kingston Recreation Department does a wonderful summer program yep. um, during the summer. So they do a lunch bunch each week. And mm -hmm. it, the, one of the earmarks was to provide those lunches for Great. that lunch bunch, which okay. was fantastic. Um, right here in Plymouth, we have the Plymouth Downtown Waterfront Committee yeah. mm -hmm. who are doing great things. Yeah. I was able to secure 25000 for them for small businesses here, great. which is great. And then uh, Plymouth Police Department needed some um, things for their boat. And I can't remember right off the top of my head what it is, but they needed some things. They requested that for yep. me and we were able to get that. Great. Uh, Plimpton Library, little town of Plimpton, yeah. which is such a great little town. They have a teeny little library. It, the population in Plimpton is a little over $4,000. Yeah. Uh, 4,000 people. 4, yeah. people, people, sorry. Yeah. 4,000 people. They don't have town water, like, you know, but they have oh. such a great library. Oh, cool. Their library, and the town is thriving as well, but their library is thriving. And there's so many younger families coming in. And the furniture in there is, like, falling apart. So I was able to supply some money um, in an earmark for them to redo that children's great. library. Great, So those are just a few things. But there's been, uh, well, you have a list there for me, right? Yeah. These are some oh, of my the other gosh. things you've oh, done. Oh, gosh. This is so important. So we have been able to supply for Plymouth and Cape Cod dental work. 
to young oh. children through Harbor Medical, um, Harbor Health Services here in Plymouth, oh, and the Veterans Memorial. So in Kingston, they've been trying to put together a Veterans Memorial in front of their town hall. Yeah. Um, and I met with that committee, and they were hoping to get an earmark. And really, we were only hoping for 25000 but we got 50, which was wonderful. wonderful. And, you know, I have to thank the chair of Ways and Means for that. So that was really important to our veterans. Right. And it's going to be a beautiful, I saw it's the, be beautiful. the artist's yes. rendition of what it'll look like. It's going to be, be beautiful. Gorgeous. Yeah. So all in all, I, it was like 335000 I was able to bring back to the district to things that these towns weren't able to fund. And they never would have. And right. they it never would have taken would've. them forever they to get them. They never would have. So, Privately you know, things like that is yeah. great that's, to be That's wonderful. Able. We call it bringing home the bacon to the yeah. district. Yes. Yeah. So I brought home a lot of bacon this session Good for you. so far. Good for you. Um, other other accomplishments that you've done this year? Oh, just working on the budget, like I said, okay. the, not just, but the you know the free lunches. The free yeah. lunches, I think, is a really big thing. Mental health is such a really big thing. Some of the bills I've filed, I've refiled the voter safety bill, which I've talked about many times, I think, on PAC and on WATD, and they just did a great article in The Globe about it. Yep. So it's, um, I call it, it's called the David Hansen Act and yep. the Voter Safety Bill. And what that does is it requires people that are going to purchase a boat, yep. put it out in the water, to take a boater safety class before they bring it out in the water. As we've seen in the past few years, and especially this summer, there's been so many tragedies, right. so many tragic accidents, right. and it's 80% of the boat accidents are Error, voter right. error. They right. just don't know. Right. I mean, you need to know your tides. You need to yeah. know red, right, return. Yeah, it's simple buoys, things, right? right? <laughs> right. Um, where the rocks are. Yeah. You need a depth finder. Right. You know, these things that people during the pandemic, the sale of boats right. went through the roof. Exactly. Because it was one great activity you could do as a right. family. And right? you could do it outside. You could do yeah. it outside. Yeah. But there's no requirements. If you have the money to buy a boat, you can put it right in the water. And unlike a car where you have to have insurance, do you not have to have insurance? You do have on boat, boat insurance. Okay. But you know, unlike a car, a boat doesn't have brakes. Yeah, that's right? true. Yeah. You know, you just, there's so many things. So <laughs> it's got a throttle. It's yeah. not expensive, yeah. right? Most of these courses are free. They, yeah. they have the courses now uh, through the Coast Guard. My children have all taken them. Yeah. I had to take one. Yeah. Um, my husband, we've, we've all taken them. I grew up with a boat. So it's just, it's a safety thing. Yeah. It really is yeah. a safety thing. And those are the types of things that people don't think of that state reps get involved with or the Senate would get involved with or that anyone would get involved right, with. Right. You know, it's like, oh, okay, you took on that safe boating. I think it's, you know, well, look at the community we live in. We oh, live in no, absolutely. Community. Absolutely. And if... If we don't file something like that, right. it will never get done. Right. But I have, you know, all the support of all the Coast Guards, um, yeah. of all our harbor masters, yeah. marine trades. I just had a wonderful letter after the two wonderful letters after the article in the Globe. What can we do to support this? That's great. I've had, you know, families that have lost other family members in boating accidents. So that's really important to me. I, right. I know there's many more bills that I filed, but really after this summer. That's very important to me to okay. get that passed. And what about um, housing? Do you have anything to do with uh, affordable housing or housing? Because I know that that's everybody talks. Everyone talks. I about just it. left an event at the Pilgrim Museum, and we were just talking about that. Um, so housing is always near and dear to my heart because you know I'm a real estate agent as well. Yep. Um, and I was one of the founders of the Affordable Housing Trust in Kingston. So the housing market, as everybody knows, is just crazy. There's nothing out there. Um, there's nothing really affordable. There's nothing affordable. No. My son alone, who we started looking when he was 27, he's now 29, we've been outbid on 15 homes. <sighs> One home we bid $60,000 over, over ask and, and you did not get it. Get it. Yep. Um, and it's not affordable. And now our rates are high, right? Yeah. And we have a housing shortage. So I really think we need to look into when there is a bill about accessory dwellings on our homes, yes. right? For our parents, yep. for our children that are need to be out in the, to, on their own, but they can't afford it right, right now. Right. So I think that will lessen the burden a little if we can pass that and make it easier if the state passes it, it will make it easier for towns to pass that ordinance. Right, because so they can have them. The towns really get a lot of pushback, they right? They do. Right. But if we start at the state level, right. and then I think that will be really beneficial to our older people. Yeah. That I was just talking to my friend Bob, who has a beautiful home here in Plymouth and wants to downsize, but what he wants to downsize to is ridiculously oh, yeah. expensive. How do you yeah. afford that when you're gonna, you yeah. know, when you're a senior citizen? And your citizen kids can't a, afford to buy your house. They can't yeah. on a fixed income. Yeah. We need more senior housing. We haven't developed senior housing. True, affordable senior housing 
in decades, yeah. in decades. And what we have is abysmal. I mean, okay. it really is. I deliver meals on wheels, so I'm there quite a bit. Right. Um, we really need to look into that. You know, work. They call it workforce housing, but that what that is is affordable housing. Right. And what affordable housing is is not low income housing. It's not Section Eight. Right. Affordable housing is what seventy five percent of us would qualify five four right now. Right. It's people, our new police officers, our new teachers, our new firefighters. It's people just getting into the workforce that want to start a family. Right. Are, and the rents in a, I could go on, Julie, you know. Oh, I know, I know. Uh, I'm I know. on my soapbox now, but yeah. the rents here are ridiculous. I know. I know. We're building all these apartments and they're saying, oh, we're going to have like 10%. Well, that's not putting a dent into it. No, it's not. We need true affordable housing. And I honestly think in order to do that, it needs to be a public-private partnership. Yeah. Our contractors don't have enough of a margin right. to build affordable housing right. and support their families. Exactly. So I do think it needs to be a public-private partnership. Right. And and it's not going to be fixed in the next right. you know, few right. years. It's going to take decades. Absolutely. But and, and it's good that you're all working on it. And you We're all, all, working you all on recognize it. that this is a huge it's problem. It's huge. And yeah. it has been for years. I know. It has no. been, and, and with this, the rate, this area of the country is just—it's crazy. It's do you just, know that we have the highest rents in Boston in the entire country. Yeah, and that's nuts. From New York, and yeah. I mean, yeah, that's ridiculous. That's